All righty, let's do this again. This is part two of the Q&A. Again, same leisurely setup. I got my questions here. And if you've never watched these uh, Q&As, I will read through the questions just in case you're only listening to them. And then I will answer in, you know, whatever fashion, free form way uh, that I've done before. And if you haven't seen part one, the link in the description is there, plus a playlist of all my previous Q&As. And that's about it. They're completely new. Uh, hi, my name is JD, and I do Q&As like these, and I do a bunch of stuff on the channel. So that's the the uh, beginning pitch. Check it out. I got animation analysis clips. I do acting analysis clips. I do lectures. I do feedback stuff, news. I do a bunch of stuff. So check it out. Uh, if you like it, maybe you can subscribe so you don't miss any of those things. It's a typical, you know, like subscribe pitch at the beginning. That's what we all do for the algorithm. So Thai Young Man, that's the username, as always. I apologize for any type of crazy uh, pronunciation. I will try to do my best. Uh, this is a long text and it's a new form. I will blend this in at the top and maybe I'll go back down. I don't, I don't think you want to see my face anyway. So this might uh, fill out the whole screen here. But so let's start. Hey, JD, first of all, Happy New Year to you and your fam. Thank you so much. Happy New Year as well. This is now February here. This is uh, Sunday. Uh, I got a time to pick up my little one. So uh, at one point I'm going to pause this. I got to go get him here. The Sunday craziness. So he says here, I got a question for you. I guess this is a case by case kind of situation, but would I but would love to hear what you think. Okay. I've been working as a 3D generalist past six months and had to leave my work due to personal reasons. Okay. And now I am back in that job hunting mode. There aren't that many jobs around in my area. Where is this area? Oh, I don't know. Hmm. Okay. And what's available is about two hours commute every day, which I'm not eager to do anymore. Totally understand that. I've noticed many animator jobs being available remotely, but they aren't usually for junior animators. I am guessing that if I was to work at a studio, I'd be considered as being a junior because 3D generalist doesn't count as an animator. Eh, probably. I'm not sure how that works, but I would, I can see why that would be. So my question is, would it be possible to be employed as a junior animator while working remotely? Or have you seen anyone who is a junior working remotely? First question and my first answer is I don't know. That's my honest answer here. I think in terms of what I'm seeing and hearing through friends and Twitter and stuff like that and LinkedIn, people getting jobs, I would say yes, but I can't point to a specific post or something where, where I can tell you this company did it um, remotely with a junior. Unfortunately, I don't know. I don't really see. To me, it's less of a position problem. Like a junior, I think if you're junior, you can totally be remote. I think it's more of a problem if you're a senior or supervisor. At that level, you it's probably more probable, to, probably more probable that they're going to ask you to be on site because of the role that you have and people you have to interact with versus a junior. So I don't think. Being a junior would mean that you can't be working remotely. That would be my answer for that. But again, I can't pinpoint to a specific uh, job posting or stuff, but I would check my animation minutes. Uh, there are always jobs there. LinkedIn is always tons of jobs, stuff like that. Um, and just keep your eye out on that. Sorry, it's not the best answer. I assume that this is fairly rare because juniors would have to be supervised and work closely with intermediate senior level animators. Again, I don't, I don't know. I mean, if the, if the company is set up to be remotely and, you know, many companies have done full projects, TV shows and movies remotely. Um, to me, again, I feel like supervisors are more likely to be on site versus juniors. But again, that might just be me. I'd love to know what you think. As much as I'm, I like doing animation and would like to continue on this career path, but also I got to consider my option as I have a family to look after and so forth. I completely understand. I have a family as well. Your wife, two kids and a dog. A bunch of stuff to consider. Like the switching around is not as, e uh, as easy as it is if you're single. Not saying that it's easy as a single person, but I definitely have more things keeping me in place. So I am all for remote work. Basically, long story short, I'm not sure if I'm of much help <laughs> with this question. I think generally, I think it's going to be okay. Just based on what I'm remembering in terms of seeing um, junior positions and where, where it says remote is okay. I mean, some companies are still 100%. No, this has to be on site or at least within the same city. Um, you know, where it's, where it's, you might be able to do half and then you have to go into the company and then you go back home again. Um, but fully remote as in like you're working for another company, different state or Canton or whatever country you're in, right? 
or a different country even, I don't know. Unfortunately, um, Tai Young Man, I hope that was somewhat okay. I would, I would just say keep an eye open on Mondays for Dimension Minute. I'm not saying this is self-serving, but I do have job postings there. So if you want to look at job postings and then check them out, the company on LinkedIn and stuff, you, it might give you a better picture of what is going on. Rough Donuts. Hey JD, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Can't wait for your new content. Mm, same for me. I just started studying animation at Adam School. Awesome. And even though I still have a lot of time to think this through, I would love to hear your opinion on whether I should choose a career in feature or game animation. I know that the simplest answer is to do what I love the most, but there are some more factors at play that make it difficult for me to decide. Okay. First of all, I love both and I would like to work for both. Okay. I have some slight preference for feature animation because I think that nowadays they're using mocap way too much for games. And I am afraid that this takes much from the creativity and fun of hand key animation away. I guess so. Um, I would actually, before I continue reading, point this answer or, or ask Harvey Newman, uh, check out his channel since he's is in that field and he will be able to tell you more. In my peripheral thing, I see game stuff that is mocap and then I see game stuff that's keyed. Um, but I don't know generally percentage wise where it's leaning more. It really depends on the style and stuff. Um, so I don't know. But again, just in case I'm giving you a, a crappy answer for the rest of this, uh, Harvey Newman, check out his channel. He and ask him, comment there and ask him, he will know. The thing with me is that I'm European and financially, it would be way better for me to get my first job in Europe rather, rather in the States, rather than in the States. Yeah, okay. I'm also European, so why not? That could be uh, fun there. I'm curious how the job searches there and the salary range and stuff. But from my research, I found out that there are way more game companies in Europe than animation studios. And I'm afraid that if I choose the feature path, I won't be able to easily find a job here. Okay, it's a valid point. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not pursuing animation for the money. It's actually my dream job and I would do it to, I, I would do it even if it didn't pay at all. Clearly my reading skills uh, on this weekend uh, are not the best. But it's really important to me to know which path will lead to higher chances of landing a job faster. Okay. It would mean the world to me if you could provide me with some guidance on this matter because you truly are one of the people in this industry who I trust the most. That's very kind of you. I would question that faith in me, <laughs> but thank you uh, again, because I'm not, I'm not super versed in game stuff. So you should not trust me. Thanks in advance and sorry for the huge text. That's okay. I know that you don't have much free time. That's okay too. This is why I'm doing it. I'm taking the time to answer these questions. Now, if you are focusing on the path that leads to higher chance of landing a job faster, as you're saying here, then I would do what's best you know available in your surrounding which sounds like it's games because the thing is i don't know how old you are but if this is your dream job i'm going to assume that you want to do it for, for quite some time so you're going to have time to switch around so even let's say you have games and feature and you're slightly more in feature lands mentally but you start in games you're still going to learn a bunch in there your resume is going to grow the people you're going to you're going to meet there it's going to be great and then you can always switch later. You know, while I mean, it's going to be more work, but as you work on weekends or something, you can do your demo reel for feature animation. I think nowadays it's it's not. I always felt like back in the day it was harder to switch, but maybe that's just, I don't know. Maybe that's just my weird memory. But I think I think you would be okay switching. And if you want to go for a job quickly, uh, in terms of you know, then you have to look in terms of opportunities. So if there are more game companies, it feels like your availability in terms of job offers. Are going to be in that sector so you might as well go there first since you like it anyway uh, it's not going to be a waste or a horrible thing to choose um and then while you work at the company you can work slowly in your other reel just in case you need to jump ship and go somewhere else i think that will be that will be my recommendation again this is very subjective it's very up, totally up to you but i think if you're liking both and you go into games first again the experience is going to be awesome you're going to learn a bunch because it's it's a completely different different technical approach and incorporation of animation versus like cinematics or feature animation type of stuff. So I think if you do this and then you switch over to feature, your resume, like you have these two, that's already great. So I don't know, to me, it feels like go for games because that sounds like it's going to be easier in Europe um, and then go from there. That's what I would say. Rexildur, 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 I don't know. 
Hi, JD. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. My questions are, do you animate only using IK hands all the time or do you blend between IK and FK if needed? If you do animate all using IK only, can you share some workflow on how to make it feel like FK? Thanks. You're very welcome. Um, I would say IK hands all the time, mainly because I learned FK at school and then when I started ILM, everything was IK and then I got so used to IK that now I'm fully IK and I'm, I'm uh, I wouldn't say I'm lost, but I'm definitely reluctant going into FK arms and hands and stuff, unless it's something very specific where it, it's going to look better. It's going to be faster. Um, but yeah, I think the best thing would be, and it's something on my list and I, I probably say this all the time and, and the, the clips never arrive, but I do want to make a specific clip, not just about IKFK, which I do want to do, but like you said, a couple tricks on my, how to make it feel like FK. There's a couple things you can do. Um, one thing you can do is like you can roughly animate something in FK, even though it looks crappy, like FK will give you really beautiful um, arcs. And then you can always constrain a helper object locator or geom, whatever, and then bake that out or do a motion trail, whatever you want to do. And then you switch back to IK and then you constrain that IK to that helper object or, or track or trace that arc that either through a motion um, trail or you drew. And that gives you like the nice look of that while it be still being FK, if that, uh, IK, if that makes sense. So do something in, um, and actually that's something that, that I do frequently, not in terms of IK, FK switching, but animating something and then baking that animation on a locator and then constraining that arm to that locator. So that animation is locked while I do other things with the body to make sure that this doesn't get affected at all by anything else, depending on the rig. Some rigs are great in terms of setup where you do chest stuff, it's not gonna change anything in, in the arms or hands, but not always. So I do a lot of um, animating, baking out on helper, constraining and locking things. So I only wanna move a specific thing. My dog is back there sleeping. Um, that's, that's kind of my approach. So. Yes, IK all the time. At the same time, to me, it feels like that's a liability <laughs> or something I should stop doing, at least at least doing some practice shots with full FK and go back into this. I feel like it has limited myself in terms of workflow and look. Because there's some things in IK that are pain that it will be a couple seconds in FK. And again, there are helper ways, but it will never be as easy. So I don't know, I want to go back to this and, and through that, I want to create a couple clips and demos and tutorials and put that on the channel. So look out for that in the future. Prexus, Prexus. If you had never worked on any big studio, do you think you would have felt fulfilled, quote unquote, as an animator? That's a good question. And that's something I can't answer because I have worked at a big studio. Actually, I'm working on a second big studio now. Um, so I don't know. I think probably at the beginning, no. That's my honest answer. I would say probably no, because I always wanted to work at the bigger studios, not in terms of like a big studio name prestige, but because of the project um, projects that they worked on. So being you know, a child from the 70s and 80s and stuff, for me, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, you know, like all that stuff, Ghostbusters, it's uh, it's just, that's my surrounding in terms of like movie experience and um, like the imprint as a kid of all that stuff. And that's, you know, primarily done by ILM. Like ILM did Ghostbusters 2, not 1. But like all, all those companies that, that are doing those awesome event movies that have completely, you know, um, shaped my, <laughs> my upbringing in terms of movies. And that's why, that's why I really wanted to work at ILM amongst you know, also other companies as well. But ILM was, was that thing. Um, had that never worked out, probably in the first couple of years, I would have been definitely bummed. I think because I, I wanted to work on a Star Wars movie. I wanted to work on something like sci-fi and action -y and things. Um, but I think now as I'm older and somewhat wiser, but also somewhat more relaxed um, and where my, my, my shift and focus in terms of happiness and success has changed. It's almost like I'm setting up a sentence and I'm finishing it. But what I'm trying to say is that now that I'm older, I think if it's if I want to do something that doesn't work out, I'm like, ah, whatever. 
it's just it's it's a bummer but it's not the end of the world there's other stuff you can do um i just want to be able to pay my bills support my family and i love animating as a whole i think that's the big change like when i started it was always i want to work on that specific project i remember that at ilm early on like oh what's the next movie i want to work on this and then as you work on a couple of projects, you get to know the people, then it becomes more about the people. Like, oh, I want to work now with this person because it's so much fun to work with them. And then as I did more and more and more, because ILM was so awesome in terms of the variety of things, because you do creatures and vehicles and cameras and digital doubles and sets and props. You just animate so much stuff in there that it really opened up my horizon in terms of how much fun animation can be. Because at school, at the academy, it was all cartoony stuff, but human bipeds. That's all That's all I did. And I loved it. But through ILM, it opened up the door to so many things you can animate, where at this point now, I just like animating anything. <laughs> and that's why I feel like the answer to this is that if I would want to be somewhere and it doesn't work out and I have to go somewhere else, I don't see it as unfulfilled. It's just, it's a bummer. It's a bummer that something doesn't work out or that you miss out on something. But there's always going to be something else somewhere potentially but at the end of the day the baseline is that i'm as long as i'm animating i feel happy that's my current situation in terms of my you know my age and situation all that stuff uh just because i love animating i love the process of animating and and anything animating anything be it props and sets and stuff in the background and characters and creatures and cameras i love it all so that's kind of a roundabout answer and i hope that makes sense all right mahesh is asking i am selected as a 3d animator in maya digital studio but i have a doubt that okay to join that company because that is a small company okay so what i'm getting out of that sentence there is that your reluctance to get hired or to start there was it's a small company and it sounds like you would prefer to work at a bigger company it's almost like a a continuation of, of what we talked about before. We, as in me talking. Sweet, what time is it? Okay, my time is going off soon. 20 minutes. Uh, how long is this? 18 minutes. Okay, I can keep going. Um, there's not, I'm not sure how much I'm seeing in terms of a question because it's going to be such a subjective, personal situation and answer for you. Like you have to, you have to answer that for yourself. Are you wanting to get hired because of the prestige aspect of what we talked about before of the name, for instance, of a company or the project, or like, I want to be associated with this because of the, you know, like I said, like the, the, the image that comes with it, or do you just like animating and you're seeing any job as an opportunity to learn new things, get better at your craft, make new connections and friendships, and then move around as, you know, as your life continues. I think that is something that's very personal and subjective and that's something you just have to you just have to decide on your own like i don't think it's always like i say it's not bad to start at a small company some companies are better when they're small there's more that you can do there's maybe more ownership there's maybe more creativity the bigger the company the more corporate potentially and the less you know freedom you have in terms of creative choices and stuff like that but I also say it's totally fine to start at a small company while I started at a big company. So it's like, I'm not in that position to, to say this in a way, if that makes sense. Again, going back to what I said before, at this point, I just love animating. So if it's a smaller company now in my position at my age, it wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me because of, I don't care about the image or the prestige or what comes with the name. I want to be at a company with a, gr a good group of people that do cool creative work where I feel fulfilled as an animator in terms of the work that I do and the, how much fun I have there. Like it's to me, this is all independent from the name and everything that comes with that. But probably also, honestly, because I have worked at a big company, actually my second company, my, it's not mine, but the second company I work at now is also a big company. Maybe it's because I, I, I have been part of big companies and maybe that's like the blase spoiled um you know view that i have like oh it's fine to work at somewhere else because i did it i, I worked at big companies i mean like again i feel like i'm not in the position to say something smart <laughs> when i read that sentence 
but I'll just give you my honest um, my honest impression and and thoughts on that. And I hope I hope it's uh, it's helpful. I would just choose whatever makes you happy. This is a really standard answer. But ultimately, after all those years, that's what I would say. Regardless of a like, company size, are you going to be happy there? And then not all the all the other stuff that, that goes around working somewhere. Is the commute okay? If you go there for three hours to go to a company, your your uh, you know quality of life is going to diminish after a while because you can't sustain such long commute. So I don't know. To me, there there are many factors that go into choosing where you want to work. It's very complicated and very subjective. I'm gonna leave it at that. Sujoy, 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 Patranabish, Patranabish. I hope that's that's the way you pronounce it. With shows like Arcane, do you think the bar keeps getting high to get into the industry? If so, what would you suggest for people trying to break through? That's a good question. And I would say in my very uneducated opinion, point of view, is that you can't, at this point, I don't feel like you can have Arcane as a reference point of this is now the new standard. A, in terms of quality, they worked on it for a bunch of years and also budget like they must have had a bunch of money to do all that work the texture work all this for so many years that's just not something that every other company can do so to me it's like yes the bar has been raised but to me it's also an outlier because it's not like oh this is like a new tool that came out that now everybody has that's the new bar and everybody you know can easily access that and, and do kind of the same quality and look that's just something very specific to Arcane and while looking also awesome, it's just, to me, it's unrealistic that now every project can look like that just because of time and money. So I don't know, the bar, yes, higher, but I don't think it's, I don't think Arcane brought up the bar in terms of anything below that look and standard is, is now crap and you can't get into the industry if you don't have that look and stuff like that. If that makes sense, I don't like. I don't know. That's, again, very uneducated um, opinion there. But animation is really good. But I would say you have to look at a broad spectrum of, of work. Different TV shows, especially TV show, like TV shows have lower budgets. So there's not much you can do compared to movies. So Arcane being a TV model is also a massive outlier in terms of quality. But I would look at different TV shows, CG, I'm assuming you're going to talk about all CG here, uh, and then movies and kind of look at entry level internships, stuff like that, get, you know, have a better view of what is being asked of you and other people as they want to enter the industry. Definitely now the bar is higher than a couple of years ago, like that for sure. Every year it gets tougher and tougher for sure. But I wouldn't look at Arcane as now the minimum bar for everybody else. Because that to me is unrealistic. But I do love Arcane though. It's pretty awesome. It's not just pretty awesome. It's really awesome. David K. Uh, that was a harsh K here. <laughs> My Ks are harsh. Hey JD, do 3D animators make their own sets and props? How important is it for an animator to know how to model props and sets for a demo reel? It's a good question. Now, do 3D animators make their own sets and props? No. And it depends. So I would say I never made my own sets and props at ILM in terms of this is an asset that you will render. But I, I, we have a library or we had a library. I had a library um, where you can import certain sets and props, um, effects and cards and dynamics and stuff to populate a shot in, in the viewport and animation to make it look better and more, you know, it's more attractive and like selling the shot for a client. So it's not just a standard play blast. But it's not like I made those props. Someone did. So if you are able to do this and you can provide that on top of being an awesome animator, I think that's great. Um, it was not something that was required. Um, but I'm sure other companies, maybe they're smaller or even bigger, where it's a bit more in a generalist role, you might have to do that. So in terms of, now for the second question, in terms of your demo reels, it's not company related, but demo reel wise, um, there's so many models out there for free and also many, many more paid. I would look at those websites and see what you can get for free, depending on your financial situation or pick some that are that are, um, you know, that you have to pay for. Uh, there's a great one that I'm, of course, forgetting right now. I'll put it in the, in the description. 
uh, it's on my animation briefer site. Um, it's, a, it's an asset pack with sets and props, a bunch of stuff. Like it's constantly updated. It's really good. And I really wish I remembered the name. It's embarrassing that I don't, and I wish I could give that person a shout out right now. But look in the description uh, of, the, of this view, of uh, this view, this clip here. I'll put it in there. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff out there for free that you can use. But I would personally look for model and props for your demo reel. And I say this all the time in, in anything that I talk about, especially my acting analysis and tips for animators, is that sets and props give you characters a uh, context and something to play with uh, physically or just visually in terms of focus. And to me, it's more interesting because then that character lives in that world and reacts to what's going on in that world and uses that world, which in turn changes your general acting choices. Because if you just sit in a room and you shoot reference and it's empty, you might resort, uh, revert back to like classic, you know, like W and like you know, all those hand poses and, and gestures that are just kind of overused. And if you want to build a real, you, you want to be as creative as possible. And to me, sets and props just give you that extra level of ideas to play around with. And if you want to work in movies and TVs, uh, you know, like TV shows, the characters live in an environment where there are sets and props. So to me, it's always, you're going to deal with sets and props eventually at work if that's the path you're choosing, right? And you might as well practice and work with that and have it on your reel so that when you send that to the company, they can go, oh, your shot looks like a shot, not like an exercise. It's a shot with a character in the environment, like what we do, and you seem production ready that you can, you think about those things in terms of composition and interaction, stuff like that. So that would be my answer. I'm always very, very pro props and sets. Giuseppe S. Hi, JD, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing on this channel. Awesome. You're very welcome. That's very kind of you to say. It's my pleasure. Although every video that you upload is a course by itself. I have a question, more of a curiosity. And because you have a major role in one of the big studios in the industry, what it takes to become an animation executive producer? Someone like John Lasseter or anybody else that I don't know about, but you do. What are the skills, paths, and etc.? Thank you so much and have a successful and healthy year. Thank you so much. Same for you. And that's a quick answer. I don't know. <laughs> um, I forgot that question. I remember I might have already answered that. I don't know. But um, what does it take to become an animation? Executive? I really don't know. Um, all I can say is uh, when you are in that position of power, don't abuse it. That's all I'm going to say. And uh, I don't know an executive producing animation. I don't know. I really don't know. I, I hate to just know nothing. I'm the Jon Snow of animators right now. Um, but you're going to have to direct that question somewhere else. <laughs> Sorry. DV underscore animates. How to study and apply reference. That's always that. I mean, that question comes up all the time. It's a, vi a, a wide range of, um, of uh, subject exploration. Again, I will link that that description is going to be long with lots of links. I did a couple of clips about reference. I'll link it there so you have more to look at. And in terms of studying as a general answer, it will depend on the style and what you're trying to achieve. So if you're going for something for the real, you can stick with reference you know, much more closely. I still wouldn't rotoscope reference and just leave it at that because there's a certain softness and floatiness and lightness when you just rotoscope even though it's exactly what you're shooting what you're filming it doesn't feel quite right you're still gonna have to go in there for like a 10 percent push in terms of some of the the timing and, and like the the final polish and the kind of the, mm, that specialty in that in that shot now if you're doing that range and you go all the way to cartoony stuff the reference will be in terms of many things it could be idea finding um observing complicated body mechanics to apply or taking your reference and then copying it and then stylizing the movement and the timing or you shoot reference where you are already acting things out very exaggerated so it's it's easier to then take that into your animation or you film whatever you want to do and then you do a time warp on your on your reference footage and exaggerate the timing there and then you can bring that over but i think as a whole reference is there for me reference is there to study and and to figure out complicated motions and also to kind of get 
all the bad ideas out of your system and just try things out in terms of acting. And a lot of times it will be a copy paste from different takes into one big take of things you like. But even then, I don't remember. There really just must be a handful of shots or maybe just one, one hand I can count where I had to reference and I stuck with that reference till the very end. It's always going to evolve. It's going to go involve, involve you know, when you ask friends for feedback or in dailies. And it's, it's always going to be a change. And you can always start with reference, animate, change things, and then shoot reference again um, for specific things, body mechanics wise, or details for fingers and, and the face. But to me, it's just, I wouldn't stick to reference only. I think it's a good starting point and it's always helpful. And I will, I will, I'm more in the camp of film reference or fine reference. Start with that versus don't look at anything and start blindly which you can, there's some things you, you will have to because there's no reference around, but you're always going to learn something. There's always something you get out of that reference, even if you only use 5% of it. There's always something worth exploring in terms of, of reference. Um, and that would be my hopefully uh, helpful answer. Again, link in the description with more of my, my, I think I have a playlist of just reference stuff. Priyanshu Sharma, Priyan, Priyanshu Sharma. Again, I hope that's correct. So I'm with my accent. Wanted to know if companies like DreamWorks, Pixar, take slash Pixar, take internationals on H1B visa. And do they sponsor because I'll be studying as an international student in AAU and later on would love to work for MNCs in my OPT. I don't know what MNCs is. OPT is optional practical training. Um, again, this is one of those where I have to say I don't know anymore just because so much time has passed since I had my H1B, which was... 18 years ago, over 18 years now. Yes. So I don't know. Are you, you're going to have to, I would find people who just started, foreigners, and ask them if you can through Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever, uh, and ask them. I'm really not, I don't know anything anymore. Um, I would hope that they still um, hand out H1Bs. I mean, they, they're still hiring international people, um, but I don't know what that process is, how long it takes, and... Uh, and what's going on in that in that environment of visas and, and OPTs and all that stuff. I apologize. I don't know. So he waited a month to get an answer where I said, I don't know. Kushai, was it Kushal? Kushal Aherval. Aherval? Again. I am now working as a junior animator. Should I need to learn rigging for my animation career? Well, depends. Um, yes and no. Maybe you just want to animate forever and that's okay. Um, do you want to know more about the process? Uh, you can learn again. It's it's an answer I, I can't give you just because it, it depends on what you want to do. I think generally it's great if you know rigging as well. If so, if you get a rig and it doesn't work, you can help out. You can help out the team. You can do like a proxy rig for for your team until maybe not junior, but as you move on until the rigging team catches up. I think there are many positives in terms of knowing more than just your one thing, whether that's animation. So it could be rigging, simulation stuff, modeling, um, you know, I, whatever. I, I think I think it's good to know, but I don't know rigging. And there I say, I've, I've done okay with my animation career. So I would say it's not needed, but it's definitely helpful. The only caveat, of course, is that if you're doing animation, it takes a long time to learn animation. It's a constant process to this day for me. And if you're also doing rigging, now you're splitting your attention to for some, to something else and that divided time you know are you going to be just okay as an animator and just okay as a rigger or do you want to be an awesome animator but then you're going to be an okay like not so good rigger it really depends on your schedule how much time you have what your priorities are um so i would say it's not needed but it's great it's great if you know kaito lao is asking what would you advise on timing okay I usually block my animation without paying attention to timing. <sighs> okay, I don't. Uh, focusing mainly on posing and setting the keys very close together. Okay, why not? After that, I try to achieve the timing using sounds. Definitely with that. By making sound effects myself or trying to get sound bits. But it doesn't always work as well. Do you have any other tips? I like that question. So I'm kind of half no, half yes. Um... Not sure if I have tips, because it's very specific workflow to you. All I can say is that um, if it's not always working out, like I would love to know what is not always working as well. 
like what specifically doesn't work and then because if you can figure that one out then i would look at well let me fix that it's definitely okay to go it's almost like you're doing stepped i don't know what you're doing but it sounds like stepped just with poses and my, you can even do on ones and you flip through to get your your main storytelling poses and then in your mind you're flipping through at a specific timing rate that has you know kind of the flow that you want and once you have that then you can spread out the keys to kind of make that timing work and what you can do is if you scrub through it or, or frame through it and that's the right timing you can always screen capture your screen maya right um and then play through it the way you think it is and that's going to be your new reference movie and then you can animate and space out the keys to match that um i definitely use sounds all the time either making sounds all the time and then animating and then animating sounds again and see if it matches sometimes making sounds recording those sounds putting these into my uh, import waveform and then have that timing as your guide as a, as a beat sheet almost i don't know um that's what i that's what i do i definitely post things out in terms of timing where i post things out every couple frames like every four frames i'm really messy with things but generally i like to think that i'm doing things like every four frames major keys but also kind of break down so it kind of works every four frames and then i move those keys around to make the timing really work and then i go layered into root chest head arms and legs and then it's just keying whatever wherever to make it work um and the reason being is that i can I can make broader changes quickly if everything is keyed, like the whole character is keyed on one frame. And all I have to do is move those those single keys in the timeline. That to me is much easier than move things around, delete stuff, put stuff back in or change things. And then once it's in a better state, then I go into more detail work. Um, that would be my my approach. That is the alarm. We got to pick up my little one. All right. Well, also perfect timing since I just answered that question. This would be answer uh, question 12. 13 would be Edson M. I think I'm going to leave it at that. It's 38 minutes. It's not as long as the other one. But let's leave it at that. And I'll do one instead of a couple weeks. I'll do the next one hopefully next week. So I'm in, in a faster um, rhythm of answering these. So I have 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 planned for today. Um, so they will swap into the next one. I think I'm going to have this part two. I think there's going to be a part three and four. I don't think I can cram everything to part three. So it's going to be uh, three and four as well. And that's it. So yeah, that's the end of the Q&A. Hopefully helpful. Um, any other questions, concerns, confusions about what I just said, comment and I'll, I'll fold that back into uh, the rest. There might also be a part five where all those questions that came in, in part will get answered as well. We'll see how much there is. Um, usually in those follow-up questions, I try to answer them in the comments and not add them to yet another part. Um, but that's it. So hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully that was okay. And maybe you haven't subscribed yet and you're not going to pitch this, right? Uh, subscribe so you won't miss any of my my uh, silly clips. It's the algorithm and growing the channel, the usual thing that we all ask for on YouTube. And uh, my dog, thankfully, didn't do anything. Usually he kind of wakes up and goes crazy. All right, I got to go. So... Thank you. I will upload this probably, I don't know, maybe Wednesday or Thursday, maybe Friday. It's a bit mixed. I have a bunch of stuff to do, so my schedule is a bit wonky right now. Um, but it will come out next week. Well, as you watch this, it will be. But anyway, thank you for watching. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in my next clip.